Okay, so I tried to open that laser disc player up that broke today. I thought I would just try to tinker around with it. Maybe I can get it to spin or whatnot. So I took the cover off, took the screws out. Um, I mean, took the screws out first. And then it has that tamper-proof thing, just like a PlayStation. It has a tamper-proof tag, which is kind of stupid because I found a way that you can lift it out the top off without taking the tag off. I did. I, I lifted it like this, completely over. So if you wanted to work on it, you could still do it without taking the tag off at the time. There was a. I, I'm surprised no one really mentioned that. Those tags are useless, anyways. You could probably find a duplicate and put it back on. But um, I took everything off. Then I saw where it was making noises, and I couldn't track down the noise. Either the noise was in the middle of the, the you know, the chipboard. Or was somewhere a little off to the side. But every time I put my ear down to listen to it. Because every time you push eject. And when it goes in and out. It makes a, a buzz noise. So I go like this. I couldn't really pinpoint it. Then I saw that when you push play. When you take the cover off. And then start playing around with the function. All the different functions. You'll realize that um, the disc. Or the, that spindle in the middle there with the laser. It spun a few times. And then turned off. So then right there, I was like, forget it. I don't know how to fix a laser display. This is the first time I've ever opened one. And I can tell you, it's not really that epic. Like people make it sound opening up a laser display. It's not that exciting. It's pretty much like opening a VCR. You think a laser disc would have this big giant laser in it or something, but it doesn't. It's got a laser very similar looking or exactly almost the same as a regular CD or something. The laser eye is not that big. I thought it was gonna be something huge. Yeah, it's just my imagination running wild. So, um, they say don't operate the thing when you open the cover. How else are you supposed to diagnose if something's working or not, or which if something needs to be replaced? I can tell you right now, if I didn't open the cover, I wouldn't have known. It was a motor, some kind of motor in the middle. And these things, it's all it was good for was parts. So people say, why don't you sell it for parts? Well, this was a hundred dollar, this was not, well, not, it was, about a hundred bucks to get, but here's the problem. I keep saying that over and over. The problem is, is that this is like one of the low grade laser disc plays of its time. Not many people, especially enthusiasts, are gonna look at one of these. So they're not gonna buy it for parts. Maybe if you had a really expensive unit that was like worth 700 bucks and you sold it for parts for 250, well, that might be a, a good thing to try out. But this time around, forget it. I had no, I had no real, um, how shall I say it? No real chance with the thing, so I just threw it away. The one good point I gotta say, we got a refund for it, because it did break, and so they get, we got a refund. I was actually surprised it was so fast. I have to tell you this one thing about everything I'm telling you right now, and it's this. What, um, when you get something with a remote control like I did, it pays off because the remote control works with my other Pioneer laser disc player. Now, people are going to say, well, that's easy. Your VCRs back in the day, all it's basically every Sony VCR I used, you would just you would click stop, play, or whatever, and you, it would work with one player to the other. Well, I thought with laser disc, for some reason I thought this, and it's not easy to really look it up. I thought that some of the remotes wouldn't work with the same branded players. You didn't know they could use a different code. You have no clue what could happen. Well, luckily, I have a second remote. They have the exact same remote, too, when you look at them. So it's a really nice remote. That's how I worked out on it. I just wish that I opened it up and I could have fixed it. But then again, I'm kind of glad I, did not, I couldn't fix it because I don't think this thing would have lasted very long. It didn't have a regular button like my other one. It was like push the button pushes in and out, and it there was a lot of. It seemed like there was a lot more plastic used. It didn't have any options on the back. The one I bought has coaxial on the back. It has an S video. It um it has a couple of different things. This one just had composite, and that was it. That's kind of depressing, isn't it? No other way to make a connection. Although nowadays the TVs don't have any of these, so. You gotta figure something for yourself, but um, like I said, if I have another opportunity to get a laser disc player, I might want to get one that has digital audio, so that I can um, possibly hook hook up a demodulator to it and hook it up to a receiver.
They said some receivers do it by itself, but I can't take my chances. So I'm going to have to buy a new modulator and go from there. So um, that would be nice to do. I can figure that out. And um, go from there. Um, don't try to repair these things on your own. It's almost impossible. If something is broken, the only thing you can fix is maybe if something got a little dirty and it won't move. Other than that, you can't find the parts for these. The only way to get the parts is to buy another one. Do you really want to spend $100 or more on another player with parts just to, fi just to fix one that's $150? No. If you break your laser disc player, that's $200 or less. I recommend you just throw it in the garbage and buy another one. But unless you like to, that's your hobby, to actually go inside and fix it. If not, just throw it away. Because with, with all likeliness, the only way you ever get replacement parts is paying just as much as what the play is worth. Which is kind of a ripoff. So just throw it away and get another one. But not a lot of people can afford that. This is a hobby. Last thing I promise. This thing is a hobby that requires a lot of money to, to put into sometimes. So if you can't afford to maybe pay for a repair or replace something, don't buy the plays. It's a waste of money because the chances are these things are going to break and you're going to have to buy another one. So don't buy a laser display and think it's going to last 20 years down the road. They're not going to happen. All right. Bye-bye.